How's it going there, YouTube? Well, I haven't any videos for a few weeks. Just been a busy guy. You guys know me. It's actually the first Saturday I haven't worked since about late September, but, uh, or I could say the Christmas breaks. I did have one off, but overtime is basically done for us now, so I figured I might better get a YouTube video put together here for you guys. Did haul a load of steel in this morning. Uh, steel price about two fifteen a ton right now. And shred is uh is about two forty a ton up here in Ontario, so scrap's up right now and the copper price is up really good right now too. Good time to be a scrapper. Of course they were just in the pits there for pretty much all last year, but things seem to be coming back together now. It's been cold though this morning going to scrap your minus twenty two, so I think it's the coldest day we've had up here yet. But at the very least I want to come back here and kinda of check on things and put some stuff away. I wanted to touch on a subject here real quick. My kind of thoughts for Steam Show Season 2021. I really hate to say it, but I don't think there's going to be a whole heck of a lot. I think anything as far as early shows go, anything in June, July, and August, I kind of have a bad feeling that I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe by fall time, I might get some fall fairs and whatnot, but the way things are looking right now, I really don't think anything's going to happen this year. As much as I hate to say it, because, you know, you guys know me, I really do enjoy the uh, steam show scene. And where I kind of basing this thought off of is there's a toy show in Walkerton. I believe it's the Formosa Farm Toy Show. It's already been canceled and I found that a couple, two or three weeks ago now. Just I meant to say in a video and never really did. Because I haven't done any videos. But <laughs> that's already been canceled and that's not until the end of March. So really not sure what to think right now as far as steam shows go, but... I think close to the springtime here, I mentioned in the last video that there might be some more projects coming home here, and I've kind of been going through the archives here a little bit. I kind of got to think of my grandfather. He had a, not just tractors, of course, we all know, he had the Oliver 80 and 99, the old 1828 there in the carport, and Model D John Deere, and so on and so on. My grandfather also had hit and miss gas engines, and also other little various pieces of equipment and whatnot, and I kind of got to thinking I may try to scout around and probably might not find the exact same piece that he had but at least maybe the same make and model as some of the stuff that he had kind of like that whole doing like gramps thing i did there back in 2019 with the giveaway and whatnot they're kind of kind of looking to piece back together what grandpa had here so with that being said i've been looking at some hit and miss engines there's a really nice uh i think it's an ib or the ia i forget what the forget what model it is now but there's a very nice international uh one and a half two and a half gas engine on a cart up in collingwood i think i might be interested in here was just not really looking to go up and do anything or putt around this stuff when it's you know winter time that's been f it's almost 600 bucks the engine on the cart so eh, not a bad deal really the engine runs and everything and whatnot but it's like anything else sitting around needs to be tuned up and cleaned up and probably could use a coat of paint and whatnot but kind of been thinking about that my grandfather had a couple of mccormick deering type m engines i've always been looking for one of those grandfather's also used to have mccormick deering number seven in insulage cutter and i haven't seen too many of those i've seen a few number nines but uh number seven insulage cutter would uh probably fit right in this tin building here if i uh moved a few more things around so Long story short, the instance cutter, my grandfather found it at a farm just off uh, Mulock and, and uh, Woodbine. Mulock and Woodbine area. There's a farm that's sitting on the silo. I could tell you exactly where the farm is, or maybe I'll get it on a video. I don't think anyone lives there anymore. But uh, basically, my grandfather found a, that corn cutter, and he went down with the Oliver 80 and pulled it home, and converted over to rubber tires and uh restored it and then it went down to the home farm there in athens with the 1828 my grandfather used to take that in the 1820 up to farmersville you guys will notice the uh my video thumbnail there that's uh gonna be what i'm gonna use i think and uh yeah so the 1828 used to uh cut corn at the farmersville show there for many years now the same fellow that uh bought my grandfather's oliver 80 and 99 also bought the corn cutter. He, of course, has passed away. I think he passed away not too far before my grandfather did. And Clayton Webb of Trenton, Ontario, was who he was. Clayton had uh, 
bought most of our stuff. Grandpa's stuff, anyway. So the only tractor my grandfather had left, of course, was 1828 and well, I ended up inheriting that. So, and of course, I've been looking after it myself for probably about the last 10, 15 years anyway, so. Grandfather saved that one, but uh, you guys all know the story about the 1828. That's kind of a legacy tractor there, family tractor, so it's not going to go anywhere. But I'm kind of thinking I may try to find a few of those things just to kind of put something back together. I was going through some old archive stuff there the other weekend and kind of got to thinking I've always been interested in the hit and miss and I just never really, never really had any myself. My grandfather also had a, I believe it was a 1922 McCormick, it was a tight band but a six horse. Another story with that Grandfather went to an auction sale. I forget where the I forget where the sale was now, but uh, he had an old bought a thrashing machine for a dollar at a sale just to get the wheels and the axle off it. Hang on, never fails. A helicopter or something wants to go over trying to make a movie. But anyway, as I was saying there, there my grandfather had a six horse McCormick doing engine. And he was looking to make a, like a cart to pull it around with. So what he did, he was at an auction sale and he bought a thrashing machine for a dollar, pulled the wheels and axles out of it, got himself some channel iron, and if he didn't even take the thrash machine home, he sent the rest of it into the scrapyard. So I guess that could, could say that's how scrapping got in the blood here a little bit. <laughs> so he basically made the cart for that gas engine, and I forget what year he sold the engine. I was there, I was there when the guy loaded up on his trailer, I think it was, I know Bill Campbell... He's a big Oliver Hart Park collector here up in Ontario. And uh, he had all kinds of stuff. He had an 1828, 1827, 80, 99, Hart Park 7. He had, he had all kinds of stuff. I was never at his place. And he passed away around the same time Clayton Webb did about 2016. And I don't know if he ever had a big sale or not. Because uh, if he did, I'd be very interested in going. More than likely have something to bring home there. But uh, yeah, Bill Campbell got the engine. And it was up at his place there in Forest, Ontario. And then I think he moved down somewhere here to Peterborough way last I heard before he passed away. So that's... I don't know what become of the engine. I don't know if he's still with all of his stuff or if he had a sale. I don't think I ever heard he had a sale because he probably would have been there. But, uh, yeah. It'd be kind of nice to get that back too, but... Actually, the old story goes, the old six-horse engine used to sit in this old t tin shed I got up here in Keswick now. Of course, it's my grandfather's shed anyway, but... Anyway, I'm starting to kind of get rambling on here, but uh, yeah, if any of you guys know the whereabouts of a McCormick Daring number no. seven inch cutter in half decent shape, if I got to put a little bit of work into it or paint it or whatever, that's no big deal. I can handle that. I think I might be interested in looking for one. But uh, yeah, let's kind of see how things go. And I just want to give a quick little check-in video here for you guys. Of course, as always, if any of you guys are interested in making a donation to the Georgian Bay Steam Show Club, there is a uh, e-transfer link in the video description box down below we greatly appreciate anything you guys can do if you can help us out we greatly appreciate it thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you on the next video